So since I haven't actually went through the forklift very well, I finally decided I'm going to do that. So in the back, or maybe it's the front, I don't really know what you want to call it because you face that way, but yet the front's kind of this way, so I don't know. Um, anyway, so the forks and the forklift mast, so that part and of course the forks, actually came from a real forklift that I bought and parted out for this project. Um, it has a 2,500 pound winch that is a little underpowered, but it can still lift around 800 to 1,000 pounds. Um, which is probably as much as it should lift because it's not really safe to go over that. Now it's fastened on with the hitch plate. So of course you can see it's got four bolts in it. That's bolted onto the hitch plate. And then this, this is actually something someone else made and it was on a tractor that I bought. It came out a little bit and it had a hitch on there for like pulling a trailer. So I cut the very end of it off right here. And then... I welded on this square tubing and then welded that to the forklift mast itself. And then up here I welded on some supports for the top. Those are of course on the mast itself. They go out under the seat and then to the kind of the battery tray supports. And then of course there's these round tubes that I kind of want to paint. I don't know. Up to the front and then or I guess up top and then over. And then of course I have a light on there. This is just so that way if I have something really tall on here, if something decides to fall over the top, it won't fall on whoever's driving it. Uh, the seat is just some random gross cushion thing that I found. And then of course this is the controller for the winch. Um, so it's actually remote controlled. So if I hold this button down, which gets kind of annoying, you can actually raise and lower it without, without the engine running. So I sped the video up a little bit there just because it's a little slow without the engine running. Um, so on a, how that's powered is I have an alternator and that's not big enough to run everything on its own. So I have this battery that's just there as basically a capacitor. So it sends power to the alternator because most alternators need power in order to actually generate power. And when it's actually lifting something really heavy, the alternator can't all power right on its own. So that's just kind of there as basically a capacitor. And then of course it, it keeps up charging it as long as you're not actually moving the forks up and down. Um, the steering was very heavily modified. So the steering wheel was of course raised up probably around 4 or 5 inches. Because the seat's higher. And then the steering was also modified. So it just comes directly from the actual stock steering right there. And then it just comes up to this little piece of metal that's like welded on and then welded on the front spindle. Uh, this front axle is actually off of a, another garden tractor. It was a Aaron's S16. I got rid of the factory front axle off this from here because it was just way too not thick enough for this giant slab of concrete that's on the front so this has one inch axles it's cast iron it's very heavy duty these rims actually have real bearings in it that are greasable it's way nicer than what roper would have put on here just just because it's off of a much heavier duty tractor now the engine is only a 212 cc but it actually is perfectly fine on this uh, which actually kind of surprised me because it has to run that alternator and actually move probably a good 1500 pound machine plus whatever you're carrying on it um, So the choke It's actually rigged up with the little piece of metal that you would find like right here to hold the throttle cable on These engines actually come with two of them. They come with that one right there And then one that's right here. So I took that one off and just used it here with this little thin piece of metal that way that way the choke actually works and then of course it has a key ignition switch with a indicator light and of course it has a safety blinking light right there um, 
So that makes it so that when you turn the key on, it sends power to the alternator and also makes the engine be able to start. Of course, I have these two supports here, which really don't do a whole lot, but they're just kind of there to help keep this from wobbling. Um, so 650 pounds of concrete, and that's on this piece of metal right here that is actually from the forklift that whole mast and forks came from. Uh, this was part of the side shift, so it was the part that made the forks go side to side. That probably weighs around 100 pounds. So I've got around 750 pounds there. And then of course, whatever these metal tubes here weigh. Of course, those are just bolted in the frame. And then they're welded on to that large piece of metal. And that's, that's kind of how the weight works. Of course, when I did the weight, I put in this piece of rebar so it can get lifted off with another forklift. So that's that. Um, I will have some pictures here, or after I'm done talking, I'm gonna have some pictures on a few more details on this. And uh, I'll also show you a picture of a tractor that it's lifted.